morning students welcome to class 3 of mathematics so we have started off with the, the chapter probability in first class i just recalled the previous uh, years probability concepts in the second class in the previous class we started off with the basic concepts of probability that is what is conditional probability and properties of conditional probability in this class we will solve some problems based on conditional probability okay problem number 1 given e and f are two events given this is problem number 1 e and f are two events such that p of e value is 0.6 p of f value is given to be 0.3 and p of e intersection f value is given to be 0.2 we need to find p of e bar f and p of f bar e okay so by definition of conditional probability what is the formula for p of e bar f so the solution p of e bar f we know this to be nothing but p of e intersection f by p of f so we know this to be p of e intersection f by p of f this is equal to what is p of e intersection f it is nothing but 0.2 whole divided by p of f is 0.3 0.2 is can be also written as 2 by 10 0.3 i can also write it as 3 by 10 so this is nothing but 2 by 3 so value of p of e bar f is nothing but 2 by 3 this is a one mark question further we have to find value of p of f bar e so what is p of f bar e what is the formula the formula is p of e intersection f divided by p of e again substituting for p of e intersection f it is 0.2 divided by p of e is 0.6 0.2 i can write it as 2 by 10 0.6 i can write it as 6 by 10 so this is nothing but 2 by 6 further simplifying this fraction i can write this as 1 by 3 so these are direct problems based on definition of conditional probability p of e bar f p of f bar e moving further problem number 2 so we have to compute p of a bar b we need to find out okay it is given that p of b p of b value is 0.5 and p of a intersection b value is 0.32 so p of a bar b we need to find out value of p of b is given to be 0.5 value of p of a intersection b is given to be 0.32 okay so the solution again this is a one mark question okay all these are one mark questions direct questions you have to write down the conditional probability formula and then find out the value okay now our aim is to find out p of a bar b this by definition of conditional probability is p of a intersection b 
whole divided by P of B. So what is P of A intersection B value? It is 0 0.32 whole divided by P of B value is given to be 0 0.5. Then 0 0.32 I can write it as 32 by 100. So 0 0.32 in fraction form is 32 by 100. 0 0.5 in fraction form is 1 by 2. For on further simplification, we get 32 by 2 1s are 2 50s are 100. 32 by 50. On further simplifying this, I can write this as 16 by 25. So the value of P of A bar B is 16 by 25. Since these are one mark problems, we shall move quickly through these. Okay, next question, question number three. We have, it is given P of A equals 0 0.8, P of B value is given to be 0 0.8. 5 p of b bar a value is given to be 0 0.4 we need to find question number 1 p of a intersection b question number 2 p of a bar b question number 3 P of A union B. Okay. So it is given that P of A value is 0 0.8. P of B value is 0 0.5. P of B bar A value is given to be 0 0.4. We need to find P of A intersection B, P of A bar B as well as P of A union B. Okay. For the first one. Okay. P of A intersection B. How might we find out value of P of A intersection B? Look at what is given. P of B bar A value is given. P of A value is given. So we can use the formula of P of B bar A to find out P of A intersection B. So we know that. What do we know? P of B bar A formula is P of A intersection B whole divided by P of A. What do we need? We need the value of P of A intersection B. I will take P of A value that side. So what do we get? P of A intersection B will be equal to P of A into P of B bar A. Okay. We know the value of P of A. We know the value of P of B bar A. What do we get? Substituting for those 0 0.8 into P of B bar A value is 0 0.4. 0 0.8 into 0 0.4 is nothing but 0 0.4. 3, 2. So value of P of A intersection B, we have found it out to be 0 0.32. Question number 2 is asking us to find out the value of P of A bar B. So what is formula of P of A bar B? It is P of A intersection B by P of B. We have just now found out value of P of A intersection B. Substituting here, we get that as 0 0.32 divided by P of B value is 0 0.5. Again, 0 0.32 in terms of fractions is 32 by 100. 
divided by 0 0.5 in fractions it is 1 by 2 2 1s are 250 is a 100 so this becomes 32 by 50 again on further simplification 2 16s are 32 2 25s are 50 so 16 by 25 is the value of p of a bar b okay the third one we need to find out value of p of a union b what do we know about the result p of a union b in first year puc we know the result p of a union b equals p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b we will use that so we know this to be p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b right what is value of p of a it is 0 0.8 plus what is p of b value it is 0 0.5 minus what is value of p of a intersection b it is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.5 3, 2. Okay, what is 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5? 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5 is 1.3 minus 0 0.32. 1.3 minus 0 0.32 gives us 0 0.98. So the value of P of A union B is nothing but 0 0.98. A. So, using the given uh, information, we have found out P of A intersection B value, P of A bar B value and P of A union B value. All these are carrying one marks, but the important thing here is you need to know all the different formulae that we have studied in the first POC as well as the conditional probability formula. Okay, moving on. Question number four. Question number four. We need to find out the value of P of A union B, okay, if these are the information given, 2 times P of A equals P of B equals 5 by 13 and P of A bar B that is equal to 2 by 5 okay so we need to evaluate value of p of a union b it is given that 2 times p of a equals p of b equals 5 by 13 and also p of a bar b value is given to be 2 by 5 Now, how can we find out uh, value of P of A union B? Obviously, we have to use the formula P of A union B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B, right? So, we have to know value of P of A, P of B as well as P of A intersection B. P of B value is already here, 5 by 13. P of A value we can find out by twice P of A equals 5 by 13. From that we can find out value of P of A. There is the last thing that is P of A intersection B. How can we find out that value? By using this information. P of A bar B formula is nothing but P of A intersection B by P of B 
we can find out P of A intersection B using this information. Okay. Now, what is given here? It is given 2 times P of A equals 5 by 13. From this, what is value of P of A? I take this to this side. So, I get 5 by 26. We have got the value of P of A. We already have the value of P of B. The only thing remaining is to find value of P of A intersection B. We will use this information. It is also given that P of A bar B is nothing but 2 by 5. Okay. We know the formula of P of A bar B. It is P of A intersection B by P of B. The RHS is 2 by 5. What is our aim? We need to find out value of P of A intersection B. So taking P of B that side, what do we get? We have P of A intersection B equals 2 by 5 into P of B, right? So what is value of P of B? It is given to be 5 by 13. I substitute here. 2 by 5 into 5 by 13. What cancels here? 5 and 5 cancels. And value of P of A intersection B, we get it to be 2 by 13. So we have all three values. P of A value is 5 by 26. P of B value is 5 by 13. And P of A intersection B value, we got it to be 2 by 13. We have to find out P of A union B. So what is the result? We know that P of A union B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. We will substitute here. P of A value is 5 by 26. P of B value is 5 by 13 minus P of A intersection B value is 2 by 13. Okay. Simplify this. Taking the LCM. What is the LCM here? 26 is the LCM. What do we having in the numerator 5 plus so this is 10 minus 4 okay so 5 plus 10 is 15 15 minus 4 we get it as 11 by 26 so the value of p of a union b is 11 by 26 the important thing here again is you have to know all the basic formulae and relationships under probability. Moving on. Question number 5, if P of A is 6 by 11, P of B is 5 by 11 and P of A union B is 7 by 11, find number 1. P of A intersection B. Question number 2. P of A bar B. Question number 3. P of B bar A. Okay. So it is given that 
P of A value is 6 by 11, P of B value is 5 by 11, P of A union B value is given to be 7 by 11. We need to find out P of A intersection B, P of A bar B and P of B bar A. So look at the first one. We have to think about how we can find out value of P of A intersection B. Obviously, P of A union B value is given, P of A value is given, P of B value is given. So we will use the formula P of A union B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. Okay. So this is for the first question. We know that P of A union B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. But we want the value of P of A intersection B. So rearranging this formula, we will take minus P of A intersection B on the LHS and P of A union B on the RHS. What happens to this result then? So minus P of A intersection B, when it comes to the LHS, it becomes plus P of A intersection B equals P of A as it is plus P of B as it is plus P of A union B when it goes to the other side becomes minus P of A union B. Okay. Substituting these three values P of A is 6 by 11 P of B is 5 by 11 minus P of A union B is 7 by 11. So simplifying this what do you get? 6 plus 5 is 11, 11 minus 7, we get it as 4 by 11. So the value of P of A intersection B is 4 by 11. Next, find out the value of P of A bar B. P of A bar B. Formula, what is the formula of P of A bar B? It is P of A intersection B by P of B, right? What is P of A intersection B? Just now we calculated it to be 4 by 11. I'll substitute it here. So 4 by 11 divided by P of B. P of B value is given to be 5 by 11. So 11 and 11 cancels, we have 4 by 5. Value of P of A bar B is 4 by 5. Okay. Last one, need to find out the value of P of B bar A. What is P of B bar A formula? It is P of A intersection B divided by P of A. So what is P of A intersection B? It is 4 by 11 divided by P of A value. It is 6 by 11. 11 cancels. We have 4 by 6. Further simplifying this fraction, you get it to be 2 by 3. So the value of P of B bar A is 2 by 3. So all these questions carry one mark. Moving on to the sixth question. Question number six. A coin is tossed three times. Find P of E bar F where Sub question 1, event E is head on 3rd 
third toss event f heads on first two tosses question number 2 event e at least two heads and event f at most two heads okay so the question here it is asking us to find out value of p of e bar f what is the random experiment given in the question a coin is tossed three times so the random experiment is tossing a coin three times and we have to find out p of e bar f but look at sub question 1 here what is event e event e is head on third toss what is event f event f is heads on first two tosses okay before writing events e and f we will first of all write the sample space of the random experiment a coin is tossed three times so totally we know that there are eight outcomes for this random experiment the sample space is denoted by capital letter s it is nothing but we start from h h h then h h t then h t h and h t t t h h t h t t t h the last one is t t t so there are totally eight elements in the sample space we can denote it as n of s equals 8 okay now we need to first find out set e and set f so what is set e look at event e event e is head on third toss so you have to look at the sample space and note down which are the outcomes where you have a head on the third toss so all those outcomes will belong to set e okay so which is the outcome where there is a head on the third toss h h h then h t h then t h h then t t h so these four outcomes have heads on the third toss so i'll write these four elements in set e so which are they h h h h t h then t h h and in the end we have t t h okay now we have to write the set f what is the set f here heads on first two tosses which are the outcomes where you have heads on first two tosses well h h h has heads on first two tosses then h h t has heads on first two tosses so no other outcome have heads on first two tosses so set f is nothing but set containing the elements h h h and h h t so e has totally four elements that is n of e equals 4 f has totally two elements i can write n of f equals 2 now what is our aim what is the question asking us to do 
we have to find out value of p of e bar f what do we know about p of e bar f what is the formula for p of e bar f it is p of e intersection f by p of f formula of p of e bar f is p of e intersection f by p of f to find out p of e intersection f we have to first find out the event e intersection f right so what is the event e intersection f what is e intersection f it is the common elements between the sets e and f so which are the common elements between the sets e and f it is h h h so h h h is the only common element between the sets e and f so what is e intersection f it is nothing but singleton set h h h so how many elements in e intersection f there is only one element in e intersection f now we have to find out p of e bar e intersection f what is p of e intersection f formula p of e intersection f by the definition of probability of an event it is nothing but n of e intersection f by n of s number of elements in e intersection f divided by number of elements in the sample space so it is nothing but 1 by 8 there are 8 elements in the sample space and there is one element in the set e intersection f so probability of e intersection f will be nothing but 1 by 8 what else do we need we need the probability of event f p of f what is p of f what is p of f it is nothing but n of f by n of s p of f formula is n of f by n of s what is n of f n of f is 2 so this is 2 by n of s is 8 2 by 8 so what is this on further simplification we get 1 by 4 p of f is 1 by 4 p of e intersection f is 1 by 8 we will substitute these two values here what do we get p of e intersection f is 1 by 8 divided by p of f value is 1 by 4 on simplifying this further 4 ones are 4 twos are 8 we get it as 1 by 2 so we have found out value of p of e bar f right so the events e and f are given here we first wrote down the sample space then we wrote down sets e and f then we found out the value of p of e bar f okay for the second question same way we are going to write down sets e and f then we are going to find out p of e bar f we'll do that now for question number 2 look at event e what is event e at least two heads at least two heads so what does that statement mean you can have either exactly two heads or more than two heads also so that is the meaning of at least two heads in the least you must have two heads no less than two heads you must have in the outcomes okay so which are the outcomes wherein you have two heads or more than two heads at the most we know that we can have three heads right so look at it 
at least two heads first we will see which are the outcomes wherein we have exactly two heads so wherein we have exactly two heads h h t h t h t h h so these are the three outcomes wherein we have exactly two heads now we will think about outcome where we have more than two heads three heads so h h h has more than two heads which is three heads it has three heads so h h h h h t h t h and t h h the, these four elements will be there in set e so this is sub question number 2 okay what is event e set e it is h h h h h t h t h t h h how many elements in set e we have four elements in set e okay similarly we have to write set f event f is at most two heads so what is the meaning of at most two heads at the most you can have two heads you can have less than two heads also you can have one head you can have no heads also so what is set f equal to we have to think about the outcomes wherein you have exactly two heads then we shall think about outcomes wherein you have exactly one head and we will think about then outcome wherein we have zero heads or no heads okay so which are the outcomes where you have exactly two heads we have hht hth t h h so i will write those three here h h t h t h t h h these three are having exactly two heads now we will think about outcomes where we have exactly one head which are they h t t t h t and t t h i'll write these three also h t t t h h t h t we'll think about wherein we have no heads zero heads which is that the only other outcome is t t t so t t t so this is set f how many elements in set f we have seven elements in set f now what should we find question is asking us to find p of e bar f so what do we know about p of e bar f p of e bar f is p of e intersection f by p of f right we need to find out p of e intersection f value p of f value so we have to find out e intersection f what is set e intersection f common elements between the sets e and f which are the common elements h h t is common h t h is common then t h h is common so these three are the common elements between the sets e and f so e intersection f is equal to h h t h t h t h h how many elements in e intersection f we have three elements we need to find out p of e intersection f p of e intersection f is nothing but n of e intersection f by n of s n of e intersection f is 3 n of s is 8 so that is 3 by 8 again 
we need value of p of f what is p of f value n of f by n of s n of f by n of s what is n of f value 7 n of s value is 8 p of f value is 7 by 8 substituting these two here what do you get n of p of e intersection f is 3 by 8 divided by p of f value is 7 by 8 8 8 cancels we have 3 by 7 so value of p of e bar f is 3 by 7 for sub question number 2 just copy down this question students given that the two numbers appearing on throwing two dice are different full stop next sentence find the probability of the event the sum of numbers on the dice is 4 ok so what is given there it is given that two numbers appearing on throwing two dice are different so in that first sentence they have given an idea of what the random experiment is right so what is the random experiment there the random experiment is throwing or tossing two dice now whenever we toss two dice how many elements are there in the sample space of that random experiment there are totally 36 elements in the sample space right so it will be so this is question number seven if i take s as the sample space right the outcomes for that uh, sample space will look something like this we start from 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 because this is the random experiment of tossing two dice right so we have the outcomes as 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 so on up to 1 comma 6 then we have 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 up to 2 comma 6 similarly i have 3 comma 1 4 comma 1 up to 4 comma 6 5 comma 1 up to 5 comma 6 so we have 6 comma 1 up to 6 comma 6 we know that this sample space has 36 elements so the random experiment is tossing two dice right but what else is given in the question it is given that the two numbers appearing are different they are not the same so of these 36 outcomes which are the outcomes where you have same numbers 1 comma 1 same so this won't be there in the sample space of this experiment then 2 comma 2 is same numbers 2 and 2 that won't be in the sample space of the random experiment similarly 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 3 comma 3 won't be there 4 comma 4 will not be there 5 comma 5 will not be there 6 comma 6 will not be there right so in this sample space is having 36 elements but we are not to consider the uh, outcomes wherein you have same numbers on both the dice so that is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 up to 6 comma 6 these six outcomes will not be there so how many outcomes how many number of outcomes total number of outcomes will be there so 36 minus these six you have totally 30 outcomes so we have to take the count of the total number of outcomes as 30 and not as 36 is that clear yes now further look at the question what should we find we need to find the probability of the event sum of numbers on the dice is 4 
so we have to find probability of the event i will name that event as say event a what is event a sum of numbers so let event a be sum of numbers on the dice is 4 so i have named that event as event a let event a be sum of numbers on the dice is 4 now look at the sample space we should not be considering these six elements which is which are the outcomes where sum of numbers on the dice you get it as equal to 4 well 1 comma 3 right 1 plus 3 gives you 4 then under 2 comma 1 series okay 2 comma 2 is not there so 2 plus 2 equals 4 even though that is true you should not be considering that then what else is there 3 comma 1 right 3 comma 1 that is also an outcome wherein you have sum of numbers equals 4 so 1 comma 3 is also equal to 4 okay 3 comma 1 3 plus 1 is also equal to 4 so these two elements are present in set a then which other elements are present in set a no other possibilities you get right because 4 comma 1 it's more than 4 3 comma 1 was the last more than that it it won't be present in the set a so what is set a equal to only two elements 1 comma 3 comma 3 comma 1 only these two elements are present in set a so how many elements in set a two elements in set a but what is the question asking us to do we need to find out probability of event a right so we need to find p of a that is probability of event a what do we know about probability formula p of a is equal to n of a by n of s number of elements in set a divided by number of elements in the whole sample space s so how many elements are there in set a there are two elements so n of a equals 2 how many elements in total sample space I have to take the count as 30 and not 36 so that is 30 2 by 30 on simplification you get 1 by 15 so what is the probability of the event sum of numbers on the dice is 4 it is 1 by 15 hope you all understood this we will continue in the next class thank you